Hello everyone. Um, my name is Akshata and I'm a visual artist. Um, but my day job is also um, as uh, is working at uh, Arts at Tobikos programs and gallery manager. Um, the background that you see is my little wall home of the home studio that I could manage to set up in this new home that I just moved in <laughs> about um, a, a week back. Hi Heather, um, hi Twinkle, and hi Majin. Um, and these are some of my new works. For people who are familiar with my work, are used to seeing a lot of red bloody boats, but as everyone, they are in quarantine too at this point. <laughs> they are packed and ready for the show, which is supposed to happen in summer, but may get postponed. Um, so yeah, they are in quarantine. Uh, but apart from that, I'm working on some new drawings and I title it as semblance, which is like a form of something, especially which could be very different in reality. And that's how I feel. And I think that's just a weird form of the feelings that I get these days and doing a lot of drawing, um, just experimenting. I keep them showing on my Instagram and I seek your feedback and how you feel about that. So, um, all that but apart from that i'm here today on arts etobicoke's instagram because on every tuesday and friday at 2 p.m we have virtual artist studio tours uh, but unfortunately the artist who was scheduled today uh, couldn't make it due to some personal engagements uh, but we will reschedule her soon in coming weeks um, but just to let you know if you're in Etobicoke or if you're Etobicoke based, uh, do quickly send an email uh, to me at Arts Etobicoke if you're interested in sharing your studio space on our platform and would like to talk about your art practice or in general how you're dealing with arts and isolation in your home studio space and we would like to have you on our, plat our Arts Etobicoke's platform and learn more about your artworks, art practice and just everything at this point um, but apart from that I'm just gonna um, say that we at Arts Etobico are doing very interesting stuff during this isolation times and one very interesting and cool stuff that I find is our juried art show uh, which is the annual spring juried art show which um, happened to fall during this very un unfortunate times. Uh, we luckily managed to have the show physically in our storefront gallery space, but with the help of our amazing website uh, designers and communications team, we also have something called 3D Virtual Studio Tour uh, and 3D Virtual Studio Gallery, uh, which you can check out on our website. Uh, it just doesn't end there. Uh, you can also interact with it and how is that we received an overwhelming response like always uh, for our Judith Art Show where we received over 200 uh, art submissions and our amazing uh, website designers who's also helping us with our digital strategies grant which we got last year um, to gather some data and learn more about uh, what the community would enjoy and like to learn in terms of art. Um, and this is just helping us more in doing that and gathering data. Um, so I'm not gonna say everything about that. I want you to go and check that out on our website. It's under gallery uh, in the Jury Dart show. Um, and what else? Oh my God, there's so much we are doing. Uh, yeah, tomorrow, Wednesday, April 15th. Um, oh, hi, Steps Initiative. Hello, hi, Canadian Ankas. Canadian cars, am I saying that right? <laughs> and hi Columbus Upside, nice to see you all. Oh hi Margie, how are you doing? <laughs> so excited to see you all um, live joining me here. Um, so yeah, I was just talking about tomorrow, web, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, April 15th at 6 p.m. We have this amazing artist professional talk by this amazing presenter himself, Ian Todd. Um, and uh, it's free if you're learning, uh, if you want to learn uh, developing your skills on how to pitch and present. Uh, this is something you should be attending tomorrow. It's free. You just have to register on our website. 
um, and you'll get a Zoom link with ID password and you could join in. It starts at 6 tomorrow, Wednesday, April 15th. Um, if you have any questions, I could answer those or I am going to keep talking about all the programs that we do. <laughs> um, if you're working from home moms and are uh, worried about engaging your kids and children into some kind of activities, we also have the uh, Saturday workshops, uh, especially for the younger ones, six to nine years old. Uh, it is about printmaking uh, and mixed media techniques by this awesome instructor, Maureen De Silva. So uh, she's going to take uh, classes every Saturday from 1 to 3 uh, on Zoom. So you need to register again for that. The link for all those um, programs that I mentioned is under projects uh, and arts in isolation program. And there are links to everything that I mentioned and you could register that. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions. If not, I'm going to move on to these questions that Arts Atopico wants to ask me. Okay, so moving on to the first question. How long have you been affiliated with Arts Atopico? Ah, well, I think, um, so I'm a newcomer. I came to Canada in 2017 um, and I believe it's since then uh, I learned about Arts Etobicoke and um, uh, came in contact with amazing uh, our executive director Wendy Redding and also the communications uh, director uh, Heather Irwin who interviewed me to be an arts instructor and those were the people who got me in and introduced me to Arts Etobicoke <laughs> um, and that was my uh, first uh, introduction to Arts Etobicoke and how I got affiliated. Um, uh, what? Okay, Heather is asking me, tell me about the meaning of the color red in your work and aesthetic. Okay, so um, my work revolves around this whole theme of immigration, migration, civil war crisis, and all the violence that um is the byproduct of all that in some way or the other and red i feel is a very uh, is a very powerful color uh, which denotes love but also anger and happiness but also the rage uh, that comes out in my work often and i would say most of the times um very symbolically at the same time um so yeah i think that's the relevance and the meaning of why i use so much red in my work um yeah any other question or if you want to know anything more uh specifically to my work okay let me just move this uh that's some of the things that i have managed to get on my studio wall so far my um recent and past and old works um those board little board houses that you see um is a part of my work called remembering home which i cannot quite um uh, enough relate at this point uh while well, i'm remembering home so much but just the ever evolving and changing definition of what home means uh, especially to the migrants and the newcomer population in Canada. Um, it changes and it evolves uh, each day as you make Canada your home, but obviously you have your roots in the country that you've been born and brought up with at, and your family and friends and community that you've been uh, with for so long, um, but also the new family and the community that you're building around um, here. Um, yeah. That's about that piece. And oh, hi, Drama Dance Code. Hello, thanks for joining. What else? Um, okay, so if you guys have no questions at this point, I'm gonna answer next question that Arts Etobicoke asks me, and that is what is something people don't know about you? Uh, Okay, so I have learned Hindustani classical music for about eight years as 
as a child I would say but I couldn't keep up with that practice uh, so I sing but I just sing to myself uh, but yeah that's something I think a lot of people don't know about me at least in Canada <laughs> um, okay next question what do you do with your spare time when you're not creating art well if I'm not creating art I am at my work or job which is at Arts Uto because programs and gallery manager creating um, amazing community art pieces or just managing and organizing um, all the programs and gallery stuff um, yeah I think that's all I do or meet people I love meeting people I, um, I network I go to these events and be there as much as I can, um, get to meet new people, learn from their stories or uh, those are the people I mean, I've mean i met uh, since I've come to Canada, have inspired me so much uh, and I keep doing that. I keep uh, going to events, art shows, uh, community events and oh yeah, hi Wendy and hi Nia, nice to see you. Um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, Nia is an uh, amazing ESA student who also has a piece in our jury Dart show. So going back to the jury Dart show, go and do it, do it. Like now, you have to curate your own show. It asks like little questions of how it relates to the theme, uh, the pieces that you've chosen or uh, what is it that uh, inspired you to do that. And yeah, just basic questions. And it's not mandatory. But if you like to tell us, please do. Hi, Columbus Upside Down. Yes. I'm doing well. Thanks, Nia. Okay, so I'll move on to the next one. Um, what is the go-to meal you make for guests? <laughs> I think most of us on live, like on here right now, know uh, the answer to that and that's chole. That's the only thing apparently according to my husband I make the best <laughs> and I wouldn't say he's completely wrong. <laughs> I'm not a very great cook but um, I can manage to cook decent chole which is Indian chickpea with some spicy masalas in it. Uh, Oh, hello, in print, Canada, Brinley, hi Jason, hi Linda Hookart, thanks for joining. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to repeat for people who just came in that I'm here um, as part of the Arts Etobicoke's virtual uh, artist studio tours, uh, which happens every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. And if you are an Etobicoke based artist or live, work, or have some kind of association with Etobicoke and would like to show us all around your home studio and things that you're doing or working on during this self social isolation times, uh, quickly send me an email uh, at akshata at artsetobicoke.com or just send us a quick chat on Instagram and we'll try and um, uh, schedule you for one of the Tuesday or Friday sessions. We'll be more than happy to have you on our Arts Etobicoke Instagram live platform. Um, hi there. So it's just showing people who've missed. Okay, these are my recent drawings. If you have any feedback or have any comments, suggestions of what they could be, throw, a, throw it at me and you could also follow me on my personal Instagram which is just my first and last name Akshata Naik and um, see my works there. I keep on posting regularly for feedbacks um, and yeah what else? I have my little plants here which I have managed. Uh, I ha I'm, not a, I'm not very great at it but I've uh, managed to not kill them yet um and here's a little spider plant here yeah, grown beautifully love it i have seen similar with my friends black holes oh that's amazing yeah uh, would love to see their artworks or if you could connect me to them it would be great or if you want to just mention them here and i'll go check them out later thank you columbus upside down 
art travels by brain waves yeah so i i have titled them like the series as semblance for now which um, means um something that resembles a uh, physical uh, some physical form but maybe very different in reality and that's how i feel at this point like i don't know what i feel but then i i have all this mixed feelings and like happy and sad and like what not and they just go in form of those drawings and they may just represent something else later but to me that is what it is for now um city life needs change hmm sure and and i'm sure a lot of things will change after after the corona craziness in a good way okay so moving on to the next question that art sitomiko has for me um what is the most meaningful art experience you have had no oh, this is um this is from my personal um art exhibition that i had last year with um uh, um noi blanche trono um at gladstone hotel uh, in their art bar which um was like the bloody boats 2.0 as i call it had like 4000 plus red paper boats flooded in their gallery space um and i was witnessing the overnight change of it since it was very uh, immersive and interactive piece for people i let them do their own create their own paper boats and add on um to the wall or to the ex- existing installation and it was very thrilling and exciting experience for me to see my whole work change how it looked overnight uh there were like 4000 plus people who attended it and i wasn't quite sure if people would be interested in making any boats because um yeah that's how i just thought about it but then yeah no i was totally wrong i ran out of like 1000 paper red paper sheets in like just 2 hours and that was crazy um uh, but fun and exhausting but it's one experience that i feel every artist should have is to participate in noe blanche i hope it still happens this year with all the scheduling and the city uh, updates but that's one show i would recommend if you could get in and could experience by being there overnight you should you must do it it needs a lot of energy but you will feel very good about it <laughs> thanks wendy uh yeah all my all my colleagues showed up um throughout the night uh wendy heather um Ian yeah just everyone Shama that felt nice so next one my favorite stuff for the night of the night oh thanks other <laughs> uh thank you so much um okay next question is why do you think community arts are important well i think it is the most important because that's what you all are doing right now right like not not physically but then like all of us are just involved into our community in some way or other and the fact that we are in isolation just informs us how important community arts are and i am i feel very happy that i am a part of this community arts organization who does amazing stuff in etobico um and i think it brings brings you closer to the community it brings you closer to the people you you've never um met before through different events and projects but you learn about their uh, interests and there have been uh instances where people have built, built on those relationships and have made those meaningful connections and i think community arts is very very important and it will become all the way more important after we are all out of this um social isolation it's hard to understand the changes for all of us oh yes for sure but we are all in this together we'll get through this so i'm just going to hang in here a little bit to answer any of your questions or anything that you may want to know about arts etobico our programs or gallery um oh yeah we do have this 
along with our visual art staff, we also have this very interesting thing coming up um, called Etobico Spotlight, uh, which is a music series uh, and which you will see will feature Etobico based uh, musicians and uh, yeah, music artists. Oh, thanks, Wendy. Love the work behind me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there, I'm blocking it. Um, that is how I started and then kind of went to that and just left it halfway and I don't know if it looks better or this looks better but yeah I just try and try and see what what comes out of it um, yeah so if there are any questions if not uh, keep um, like keep connected uh, to your friends, family, uh, follow us on uh, our social media, subscribe to Arts Tobico newsletter if you have not. Uh, we have this whole um, project on um, arts in isolation with a um, zillion of events lined up and we're working on bringing in more stuff for you. Oh, hi, Okad, you seed, hi. Um, thanks Heather, they complement each other. Okay, I need to just then put them side by side and look at it together to get more, make more sense, to get more understanding of it. Thanks for that. Okay. So I'm gonna head out um, with that and yeah, if you have any questions, you want to reach out um, to us, uh, feel free to send an email um, at akshata at the rate arts at and we'll be happy to serve you in whatever we, way we can. Great. Bye everyone. Stay safe.